Hi, everyone. I wanted to take a few minutes to discuss some of the most important points of the syllabus. First, I advise you to have a copy of the syllabus available to review as you view this video. More importantly, it's very important that you study the syllabus very carefully because everything in it applies to you personally. It's very important to me that I treat all students the same, so I always adhere to all of the syllabus policies, and you'll need to, too. That's me, and it's more or less what I look like these days. My name is Professor Deborah Oakey, but you can call me Deb. I'm really not a formal person. Now, if you're not comfortable calling professors by our first names, you can call me Professor Deb or Professor Oki, but I really hope that you grow to feel comfortable enough with me just to call me Deb. There's information on the syllabus about my office hour and contacts, and you need to make sure you study that information carefully. Now, I should tell you that because of my health, I teach exclusively online, so I'm not on campus very much. If you call me at my office number, you probably won't be able to reach me, and I might not get your messages. Instead, you should email me through Canvas. I check my Canvas email first thing in the morning, Monday through Friday, and I usually check it several times a day. Most weekdays, I'm online from very early in the morning until at least noon, and will get back to you as soon as I can. If you email me through Canvas between 10 a.m. Sunday and 8 a.m. Friday, I will get back to you within 24 hours. But I don't check Canvas email on weekends, and I often have meetings to attend on Friday. So if you email me on Friday or Saturday, you might not get a response until Monday. The syllabus lists department requirements for English 231, and you should study those. But I want to spend a couple of minutes quickly reviewing the specific requirements for this course. By now, you should have studied the document on the home page that provides instructions on how to navigate the course in Canvas. If you haven't, study that document, which you can access by clicking on Click Here at the top of the home page. Make sure you study that because it contains important information. Now, as that document states, you will access the materials and assignments for each week by clicking on the link in the table at the bottom of the home page. The material on those pages, combined with the assigned course readings in the textbook and emails I send to you through Canvas, are the course. And since you've chosen to take this course online, you accepted responsibility for studying every word on those Canvas pages and in emails. As you study the weekly assignment list pages, you will find links to quizzes. The quizzes will cover major points from the assigned literature and from videos that discuss what literary critics have said about the works. We'll discuss more about the quizzes later in this video. Most weeks, you also will need to participate in discussion boards. Now, most weeks I will offer several discussion board topics to choose from, and you are required to post to one of the discussion boards. Since discussion board topics align with exam topics, I encourage you to post to extra discussion boards if you want to, and I strongly encourage you to review what other students have posted. We'll talk more about posting to discussion boards later in this video. Finally, you'll be required to write two three to five page exam papers in MLA format and submit them in Microsoft Word. We'll discuss more about the exams later in the video, but it's important to note that anyone who does not submit both exam papers can't pass the course. For this course, we will use volumes A and B of the Norton Anthology of World Literature and Othello. Now, W.W. W. Norton has put together a special bundle of books for this course that is available in the CSN bookstores. If you choose to purchase your textbooks elsewhere, 
make sure to visit the bookstore to determine which edition of the textbooks we are using and copy the ISBN from the inside of the book so you can be certain that you had the correct text. As we'll discuss later, you have to use print versions of the textbooks. You can't use ebooks. Now, we'll work with Volume A of the Norton Anthology for the first unit and Volume B and Othello for the second unit. The syllabus provides information about evaluation that you should study carefully, but I want to take just a couple of minutes to review some of the major points. As I mentioned earlier, as you study the weekly assignment list Canvas pages, you will encounter links to quizzes. The quizzes generally cover the major points of assigned literature and videos. Now, I try very hard to ask questions only about major points and avoid being nitpicky. If you study the assigned literature and videos, take notes, and review your notes before taking the quiz, I think you'll find most of them fairly easy to pass. You'll have limited time to complete the quizzes. Most quizzes are five questions, and unless you've emailed me a form from the Disabilities Resource Center stating that you're allowed more time, you will have 10 minutes to complete the quiz. Quizzes can be accessed only once, so it's important that you thoroughly study all of the materials before clicking on the link to the quiz. The deadlines for all work in this course are 9 a.m. Thursday, and at precisely 9 a.m. Thursday, the quizzes assigned for a week will lock down so you can't complete the quizzes after the deadline. Make sure you have the quizzes finished and submitted before 8.59 a.m. on Thursdays. I don't accept late work, and unless there is some kind of an extraordinary circumstance that you can document, quizzes can't be made up. Each quiz is worth 100 points. Quiz scores will be averaged and will total 30% of your course grade. As we've discussed, most weeks you will be asked to post comments to a discussion board. I usually offer several topics to choose from, and you only need to respond to one of those boards to earn full credit each week. Discussion board grades are based on completeness of answers, but in most cases, you will be asked to address the question posed on the discussion board, include one and only one example from the literature, and include the page numbers on which that example appears. Now, the discussion board topics usually align in some way with exam questions, so one of the purposes of the discussion boards is to allow us to help each other on our exams. Since you're required to include page numbers on the discussion boards, you can't use ebooks for this course. Ebooks don't include page numbers, and it's important to supply the page numbers for the example you refer to so that students can find that passage if they want to use it in their exams. If ebooks are ever available that have page numbers that correspond to the print books, I won't have a problem with them. But at this point, you need to use print copies of the textbooks for this course. Those books are available through the CSN bookstores on all three campuses. Now, the discussion boards will remain open throughout the semester so that you can go back and see what's been posted, but the deadline for posting to the discussion boards is 9 a.m. Thursday. So if you don't post by that time, you'll earn a zero for that week's discussion board assignment. Again, each discussion board is worth 100 points. Discussion board grades will be averaged and will constitute 30% of the course grade. Finally, as we've seen, you will be required to write two three to five page papers in MLA format, one in response to each of the two exams. The exams must be completed in Microsoft Word, formatted in MLA style, and include MLA documentation. Materials for this course are divided into two units. You will pre be provided with an exam assignment sheet early in each of the two units, and you may choose any one of the questions on the assignment sheet to respond to. 
you will be asked to use MLA in-text documentation and include a works cited page that does not count as one of the three pages of required text. As we near the due date for the exam, we'll devote a week to going over the exam and all of the information you need to do well. Each exam is worth 100 points. Exam grades will be averaged and constitute 40% of the course grades. However, students must submit both exams to pass the course. Any student who does not submit both exam one and exam two cannot pass English 231. The syllabus covers all course policies in considerable detail, and it's important that you study the policies carefully because each one of them applies to you personally. But let's take a few minutes to review some of the most important points. The CSN policy regarding students with disabilities is in this syllabus, but there are a couple of points I want to emphasize. The most important aspect to note is that in order to receive accommodations, you must visit the Disabilities Resource Center. The staff will require you to provide documentation, and then will provide you with an accommodation form. Now, you have to email me that form in order to receive the accommodation, and the accommodations are not retroactive. For example, if the DRC determines that you will be allowed extra time for quizzes, you will have twice as much time to complete each quiz. But if you don't email me the form until, for example, week three, you will not be allowed to go back and take the quizzes from weeks one and two with extra time allowed. Also, since the exams are take-home exams, you are provided with questions early in each unit, and we devote two weeks to preparing for and writing each exam, no one will be given extra time to complete the exams. If you want, if you need extra time, you can always work ahead and review the information and start completing the exams early. Also, similarly, since you can devote as much time each week as you want to to post to discussion boards, no one will be given extra time to post to discussion boards. The CSN Writing Center policy is also included in the syllabus. I do want to point out that the Writing Center is free and that it can offer help in all steps of the writing press process. It would be a really good idea to work with the Writing Center on the exam papers. Again, the policy on Centers for Academic Success is a CSN policy and you should study it in the syllabus. The Centers for Academic Success offer numerous programs that can help you do well in courses. Not only are tutors available, but you can also get help with time management, study skills, and be addressed to resources for addressing issues outside the classroom that might be preventing you from doing your best. It's really a wonderful service, and it's free. If you are experiencing difficulties in any CSN course, I strongly advise you to contact the center on the campus nearest you to see what they can offer that might help you. CSN is absolutely and truly committed to student success, and there's a good chance that the staff at these centers can help you find resources to help you with any issue you might be having. As it states in the syllabus, the CSN Academic Integrity Policy is in the Student Handbook, and it should be considered part of the syllabus, so you should study it. But the part of the policy that applies most directly to this course is the discussion of plagiarism, which will apply to the exam papers you will write. Now, you should have learned the basics of avoiding plagiarism in English 101, but the most important aspects are listed on the syllabus. Obviously, you need to complete your own work. Don't have someone else write your paper and don't submit papers you purchased from the internet. For this course, it would be difficult to find papers on the internet that would meet exam requirements, of course. It's also important to put everything in your paper in your own words, except for occasional direct quotes. Don't copy anything word for word from any source. 
generally, anytime you use more than three terms in a row from a source, it should be considered as a direct quote, and direct quotes should be somewhat rare. Also, it's important to note that you must include an in-text citation for all material taken from sources, not just direct quotes. Anything you summarize or paraphrase also must have an in-text citation. As we'll see when we discuss the exams in depth, everything you say in exam papers must be supported by either material from the literature or information from literary critics that I will supply in the videos. That means in most cases, every paragraph in your exam papers will have at least one in-text citation. We'll discuss using in-text citations in more depth when we prepare for each of the two exams. Finally, each of your exam papers must include a works cited page that does not count as one of the three pages of required text. We'll discuss how to compose the works cited page for each of the exams when we prepare for them. Now, college courses are designed for adults. In this course, as in most literature courses, literature and discussions may deal with mature subjects such as sexuality, violence, race, class, politics, and religion. We'll all make an effort to treat these topics with maturity and respect. Now, college is supposed to expand our minds and extend the boundaries of our comfort zones by confronting us with ideas and materials that might differ from those we are used to. That might be challenging, but if we all treat each other and opposing views with respect, we will all grow as scholars and as human beings. Make sure to check the syllabus for the last day to withdraw from the course. Now, it's important to note the CSN doesn't provide professors with a way to withdraw students. If you wish to withdraw from the course, you must do it yourself by following instructions in the current CSN catalog. If you need information on how to withdraw, the registration office can probably supply it for you. <laughs> Unfortunately, we change technology so often at CSN that chances are that I won't have current information on how to withdraw. It's also important to note that you won't be withdrawn from a class if you simply stop participating. Instead, you'll get whatever grade you earn in the course. So if you stop participating fairly early in the course, you'll earn an F. The CSN's policy is that students must have completed most of the coursework to be eligible for an incomplete. In most cases, this means that you can't apply for an incomplete unless you face an extraordinary circumstance after the last day to withdraw. There are exceptions in the cases of really serious extraordinary circumstances, but that's usually the case. Now, incompletes are granted very rarely. In order to be considered for an incomplete, you must be earning at least a C and face an extraordinary circumstance after the last day to withdraw. Since this is an online course, extraordinary circumstances are generally defined as circumstances that would make it physically impossible for you to get to a computer to access the internet. Examples of extraordinary circumstances would be a serious illness, hospitalization, or incarceration of the student, him or herself, not a family member. Of course, you can always email me through Canvas and request an incomplete. I have no objections to getting requests for incompletes from students, and I will do everything I can to work with you that aligns with CSN policy and is fair to everybody in the class. But please, don't be surprised if I say no. I'll do my best to help you and to accommodate you any way I can, but I have to live within the parameters of the policies just as you do. Finally, the English department requires that professors submit a schedule the students will use to complete coursework. If you're granted an incomplete, I will provide you with a list of assignments to be completed and allow you to determine the deadlines for each assignment. 
but you'll need to meet those deadlines in order to pass the course. Now the schedule has to be submitted before the end of the semester, so if you think you might want an incomplete, it's important that you contact me about it as soon as you can. Now, late work and using Microsoft Word might not seem to go together in a policy, but as you'll see, they really are related. First of all, deadlines for this course are 9 a.m. Thursdays, and I do not accept late work unless you have a documented extraordinary circumstance that prevented you from completing assignments that week. If you do have an extraordinary circumstance and need an extension on a week's assignments, you need to email me through Canvas before the assignment is due, not after. I'll work with you any way I can to extend deadlines and help you make up work if you face an extraordinary circumstance. But technical problems are not extraordinary circumstances. In fact, they're pretty common occurrences, as we all know. Now, when we choose to take online courses, we accept responsibility for the technology we use. Fortunately, every computer on each of the CSN campuses provides internet access and Microsoft Word, so there shouldn't be a reason that you can't access the technology you need to complete the work for this course. Also, I will not accept exam papers that are not in Microsoft Word. Fortunately, Microsoft Word is provided for free use at home for all CSN students. All you need to do is contact 702-651-HELP, that's 702-651-HELP, to learn how to access it. Exams will be accepted late only in cases of extreme emergency, and quizzes and discussion boards will not be accepted late. Graded papers, announcements, and other important information will be provided through Canvas email. They are part of the course, and you are expected to study every word of every email. You're required to check your CSN email every day, Monday through Friday. And that's very important because some emails will require a response within 24 hours. As I stated earlier, the only way to contact me reliably is through Canvas email. I check Canvas email every day, Monday through Friday. If you email me between 10 a.m. Sunday and 8 a.m. Friday, I will get back to you within 24 hours. But if you email me on Friday or Saturday, you probably won't receive a response until Monday. Now, this is very important. Canvas puts together a to-do list and calendar that, for this course, are completely worthless. Worse, professors don't even see the to-do list provided for students, so we can't ensure that the information is correct. In fact, we don't even know what you're seeing. For this course, you are to ignore the to-do list and calendar completely. If you don't, they're only going to confuse you, and if you follow the links provided, they might even take you to documents that are out of date. Everything you need to do each week is detailed on the weekly assignment list Canvas pages that you will access through the table at the bottom of the home page. Those pages discuss assignments for each week. If you work with that stupid to-do list, you might complete the wrong assignments, and since the policy is telling you to ignore the to-do list, you won't be able to redo or make up the work. Canvas and most programs of this type are far too automated, which removes course control from professors. But Canvas doesn't teach or grade this course. I do. If you work with the weekly assignment list, instead of those worthless to-do lists, I don't think you'll have any problems understanding what you need to do. And of course, if you do have any problems, just email me through Canvas before the deadlines. If there is something on those weekly assignment lists that isn't clear, not only do I want to explain it to you, but I want to revise those pages so that they are clear to everyone. 
I think that hits the most important points of the syllabus, but make sure you study the syllabus carefully. I'm really sorry this video was so long and so boring. I hate starting a semester by going over the syllabus, which is more or less a list of things that can get you in trouble. But the syllabus does constitute a contract, and it's really important for students to know what they're getting into right at the beginning of the course, so I do always take the time to go through the syllabus at the beginning. But really, I'm not nearly as much of a witch as this syllabus makes me look like. Pretty much if you do the work and you do it on time, I don't think you're going to run into too much trouble. And also, I think most of the syllabus information and policies are pretty basic and probably not too much different from what you've seen in other college courses. But I want you to know and I want to emphasize to you that I'm always here to help you any way I can that would be fair to everyone in the course. If you have any questions or concerns, all you need to do is drop me an email through Canvas. Even though we will probably never meet face to face, I am genuinely interested in your success in the course and I'm concerned about you as a human being. I want to help you any way I can, but you need to get in touch with me through email to let me know what problems and concerns you're facing. Well, we'll talk again soon. In the meantime, take care of yourself and try to have some fun when you can. I know the student life isn't the non-stop keg party that movies make it look like. Students do a lot of work and deal with a lot of stress. I want to help make your life as stress-free as I possibly can, so do email me if you need any help or just if you want to talk at, at any point. I'm always here for you and I really do care.